God, I can actually tell that I'm making a dent in the quantity of amplifiers I have here. I got to tell you, I'd, this has been a, a long morning. <laughs> um, I come out here, today's Saturday, by the way, you guys. It's the uh, middle of the weekend. I come out here and um, early this morning and popped open the shop door and said, I'm going to find these two amplifiers that I need to find. This is This is one of them. And proceeded to rip the whole shop apart looking for these because I know I knew I had them. Um, why I was at it, I was able to find my uh, my friend uh, Mr. York's other amplifier that has been lost in the in the myriad of stuff. Um, when we received everything, we were marking, okay, guys are sending me three and four amplifiers at a time. So I had a bunch of amplifiers where it was like so-and-so's amp one of five. Well, where's the other four? <laughs> so I reorganize everything and I'm like, well, what the hell? I couldn't find these two amps because they were, these are the next thing on the, on the checklist for me to do. And so I walk into the house, I got the checklist. I'm like, here, I'll even show it to you. This is the checklist. I walked in and I said, so what am I, where are these two amplifiers I'm looking for? Because she's in charge of all of that. She goes, this is what you're working on. This is the order it come in. This is what you're doing things in. And she looks at me and she goes, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And she was super busy today. She got a ton of stuff going on. So she wasn't able to help me go dig, but I sat here and just went through everything and I couldn't find them, couldn't find them, couldn't find them, couldn't find them. And I'm like, man, where did... It is three o'clock in the afternoon. I've been out here since eight this morning. So everything got down stacked, laid out, reorganized, made sure everything was grouped together and then put back away. Um, man, I got a lot more room than I thought I did. Thank God, I, was, I felt like I was drowning until this, this last couple hours. So this, this all worked out well. <laughs> I mean, like really well. So um, I'm walking around in here. I'm like, well, I had three or four boxes that weren't open yet and one of them was sitting like literally where the rear tripod of the camera is sitting and I've been banging my tripod leg into it for four months five months and I removed the radio and amplifier combo that was sitting on top of it and went oh here they are they're still in the box so gentlemen what we're here to talk about today most of my afternoon gone. Um, we've got to do what I call a delicate restoration. This here is a Dave made cabinet that was uh, repurposed by Stickman. And then we've got yet another Dave made cabinet, but way thinner gauge metal, but same style, that also was repurposed by Stickman. The guy that owns both of these amplifiers bought them off of eBay and he wants me to verify one, if they work, and two, how well they do work, and three, he wants me to do a light restoration on the inside of them. But I've got to stay true to Stickman style of building. Good, bad, or indifferent. Um, I got a lot of ass kicker equipment here for repair, by the way. I mean a lot. I think I've got what, 10 amps that are ass kickers that are here at the moment. I've probably got 20 donkey stompers here at the moment. Like 20 X forces, about 15 Dave maids, about eight black cat amplifiers. And then just a myriad of other stuff. I mean, well, I'm not gonna lie. I got way more Texas star equipment in here than I do anybody else right now. That's hands down. <laughs> 350s, 250s, 667s, sweets. Oh my God, I have so many sweet 16s. So many. Okay, this is a one by two. That's a straight six. Let's go look at the inside of this. Um, these are direct eBay donors. So here's my problem with the one by two. It is a 2879. driving two 2879s, but let's look at the lot numbers. 
These look familiar to anybody? Yeah, these are the infamous Chinesium knockoff 6Js. We can tell that just by the, the lot number, the print, the leg length, the glue around the edge of the ceramic cap, the foot style, all that stuff. Somebody had this amp, they wanted to sell it, so they went ahead and they just slapped these cheap Chinesium transistors in here, these knockoff knockoffs in here, and sold them on eBay as is working with Toshiba transistors. We'll come back to that. This amplifier here, which we'll use the one by two again to support its ass. is also all Toshiba's, but I want you to look real close at something. That is an OJ marked with a, or paired with a 5B, paired with a 6-1, or 6I, that is a 9I, that is a 6J, and that's a 9A. You know, I hear this all the time, but the transistors are matched. They're all the same lot. And I want to look at people and scream, it doesn't freaking matter. <laughs> the lot numbers don't make any difference to me. The only thing that makes any difference to me is the HFE gain. If they're all relatively close, within one or two HFE of each other. So we've got non-red dot, red dot, um, 90s red dots, 80s red dots, 80s non-red dots, 90s non-red dots. Um, this is a giant bag of schmoo, is what this is. Which is good. And this is in relatively good shape compared to the other amp. Um, power wires are woefully inadequate. This is a joke. This, this has got to be somebody's idea of a sad joke. But we're going to clean this up. We're going to clean both of these up. We're gonna stay stick to the. Uh, we're gonna stick 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 to the stick. We're gonna stay true to the stickman style of combining in this one. Um, we're gonna try to stay true to the stickman style of tuning in that one. Um, he wants to kind of keep these just in a restorated state. He's got a lot of equipment from me already. He's not interested in having any more stuff built by me. He's interested in having these. Um, he, he's a collector. He's one of these guys that, you know, if you ever get the chance to go to his man cave, he's already got eight fat boys and three or four, you know, tech nines and 15 or 20 BBI boxes and, you know, two or three, one, two, three boxes and that kind of thing. He's a collector. He's got a man cave with all of these boxes in them. He really does. And he's working on his ass kicker collection. The hard thing with ass kickers, it seemed like there wasn't a lot that was ever made by him that was like a clean build. And what I mean by clean, in, in my opinion, when I say clean, the term I'm talking about is when you start out, let's say like this, from this position, clean, 100% new, um, clean build up to a finished product. It seems like it's it's always, uh, at least the ones I see come through here, a lot of them are reworks. Now, don't get me wrong, he knew exactly what he was doing. He had built more boxes, repaired more shit, helped more people and won more shootouts and had more people talking on his equipment than like nothing but respect, nothing but love. We're not here to bag. We're here to document, we're here to repair, we're here to clean, and we're here to make run good again. That's what we're here to do. So please understand that's where we're coming from. Was the combiner circuit the most efficient in the universe? No. You'll find that a lot of ass kicker equipment that's combined, well any equipment that's actually built in this style, with this style of combiner, it will make the power, it's just going to pull almost twice the amount of current to make the power. And it's going to get 
twice as hot. It was the weirdest phenomenon when I was learning, you know, like I'd had a, let's say like a Dave made box or an X, or a, you know, X force, um, Carl built, we'll say a 16 pill. It pulls 420, 450 amps to make 4,000 watts of power, roughly, just roughly saying, okay. You get a stickman box, it makes 4,000 watts of power, but it pulls 700 amps to do the same job and it gets really, really hot. And I always wondered what the difference was and then I learned a little bit more and found that the moving the RF around um, at 100 ohms the entire time. So from the point when the RF leaves the relay to where it comes back to the relay, everything is working at 100 ohms. Okay, everything. None of this is 50 ohm stable anything. Where the X-Force Dave made Motorola, I guess it would be Motorola volume number two, master Motorola RF um, technical handbook volume number two guide of building. Um, they'd break this, this same six pill down into three sections and it's 50 ohms up to the transformer, then 100 ohms and 50 ohms after the transformer. That difference literally meant like half the current, the same amount of power, half the heat. Come to find out that's the difference. So still good boxes, made the watts, ran for decades. I'm just here to help. Let's get on with that. Let's talk. More do. <laughs> so I can take it off the tripod. Okay, so let's get down in here and let's take a quick look for what we got going on. I'll set this down on here. This is our output coax lead. It's not even hooked up. So we're going to make the attempt. Let's reach in here and let's fix this and let's see if we can even make it so we can talk through this thing. I get tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again. I feel like a robot most of the time. But repetition is part of this business. Please note the relay is ripped off the board. So we're gonna have to fix that too here in a few minutes. I just wanna see if this thing's gonna work or not. Um, Another one of the small details that we didn't get to show you is if you look here, you'll see that the protection diode has been ripped off. This is going to need a lot of help, but let's set you up here. Let's see if we can talk through it. Hello, audio one, two, one, two, not too bad. Okay. Hello, one, two, we're on 12 volts. Now watch, this thing will make stupid power now. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's got problems. All right, let's turn on the spectrum analyzer here. So we're making about 400 watts peak on these fake transistors. Let's uh, kick on our power supply. So we're charging up our super caps. And of course, everything is of face value here. This is a thousand watt slug and peak. Thousand and average and five watt slug in reverse back from the bird. 10,000 watt dummy load. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. It's getting with it, no doubt. Okay. Well, let's lift our dead key up a little bit. Hello. Our input tune's off the chart. Hello, one, two. Little dirty. Just a little dirty. Let's fire up our FLIR. And let's see what's getting hot in here because they are stinking. Something's stinking. That's the downside to this FLIR is sometimes it turns right on and then other times it's got to go through this boot process.
still waiting. When we upgraded the sensor in this FLIR to the E8 sensor, um, that's when it started doing this. Okay, now we're running. Okay, so of course our attenuator is getting hot because it's being driven way too hard. And our flybacks are screaming hot too. Okay, so it does work makes very dirty power but it's making a ton of peak I didn't bother to look at the amp meter hello audio it's about right 80 amps okay well let's rip it all apart and start fixing all the stuff that's broken I was uh, inspired to rip these transistors out because the owners decided to go another way and I was sitting here looking at the power wire and I was going to remove them, then I'm going to go wash the thing. How did that not short out? We'll never know. We will never, ever know. Okay, say goodbye to Filthyville, because we're going to make this thing go bye-bye. Can you believe it's the same amplifier? This board was almost black when I started. Okay, so... We got all the cigarette jizz and all the nastiness out of the inside of this thing. So there's a couple things I gotta insist on. If you notice, the pill screws are just screwed. So they're just drilled holes. Well, the transistors are held down with sheet metal screws. That's the way Stick did some of these, and that's okay. I mean all we're trying to achieve is getting the transistor to stay attached to the heat sink. The problem is that the sheet metal screws can lead to a major problem, which is the, uh, the pill pocket hole curling up, which we can start to see here and here. You can see the metal burr starting to pull up. And the same thing over here has happened. So the amp might have run like hell, but it wouldn't have lasted very long because the transistors weren't sitting very flat. And the amount of schmoo that I found underneath these things, as in like metal flake and pieces of solder flake, whoever put this back together honestly didn't care. They were just trying to get a product out the door that they could sell. Okay. Well, it's my job to come along and try and make it work really well with real legit parts and uh, not get crazy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna counter bore these. And we're gonna still use sheet metal screws. We're just gonna use a little bit different ones. And um, we're gonna see if we can get this to go back together. Uh, I'm gonna do a complete rebuild swap on the relay. This is just too much for me to mentally let leave here. I've got a whole bunch of more 12 volt relays have faith and I'll take the case off the outside and everything just the way stick used to do but uh, like for some reason this wire got cut right in the middle we're gonna replace this wire which is our remote over to our remote on switch over here we're gonna replace this um, the light is the way it was, so we're going to clean this up, shorten these leads up. The variable potentiometer, um, we're going to replace this here. This is a splice, a splice, and a splice to the joint. We're going to fix all this up. We're going to clean all this up. So now that we've cleaned it, thoroughly cleaned it, washed it, rinsed it, put it in the oven, dried it, all that kind of stuff, and yeah, you, you, you didn't hear me stutter. This literally just went and spent 45 minutes sitting in my oven at 125 degrees to make sure we've got all the moisture cooked out of all the parts. See, there's a million little tricks to this game that I share a lot of them, but I don't share them all. Okay, I can't help myself. I gotta, I know this guy's gonna end up using this thing, so. We took the old worn out, clapped out coax connectors out. 
replace them with brand new silver plated gold pin inserted virgin Teflon inserts, PL259s. Um, <clears throat> those old connectors were held in, the screws were literally screwed into the connector and that was it. I went ahead and I uh, replaced them with actual hardware that have got keeper star washers on the back of them and then we're going to solder directly to the board. A little bit of an improvement will not help us see a single more watt but it will make it much more reliable for the end customer. Um, <clears throat> there was no this is like Teflon wire, yeah, okay. This is our lead that come down and went to our positive rail and then went up to our remote. This is rubberized wire like off of a piece of speaker or something that come off of our jack and went down to our relay. We are gonna change those two out to Teflon and we're gonna make it so that they pass through a ferrite bead, which is very important. It helps keep the IF inside the cabinet and outside signals from getting in. Must do that every time. Other than that, I'm gonna leave his stock tuning in here. Stock transformer, stock windings, stock keying circuit, stock coax, stock input circuit, stock grounding. We are gonna fix this 10 ohm resistor, which is a joke. Over here, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna replace these. We're just gonna polish this up just a little bit. But when we come back, This, uh, this dumpster fire here that's taken place will be replaced with a brand new modern relay with a diode in it. It's buried in the back of the, the relay right here. It'll click on and help snub out the keying um, when, the, when the relay unloads. It'll snub the high voltage surge that comes off of the coil. So, yeah. Let's take the case off, let's cut some leads, let's get stuff hooked up the way it used to be. Completely rebuilt. <laughs> um, completely spotlessly clean now on the inside as much as it can be without completely stripping the whole thing down to nothing and polishing the board out. But we only changed out a few parts course the fake knob transistors just changing the ISO gain so you can see a little bit better now let us not forget this board was jet black when it came in here the relay was broken off the board not mounted none of the wires were connected um, this should have electrically shorted out and burned up um, they had a 2879 feet and well fake 2879 feet and two fake 2879s. These are beta, main, uh, beta gain matched new non-red dot Toshiba's, the legit deal. This is a brand new, brand new 2290 over in this hole. None of these parts you can buy anymore. Um, replaced our input uh, attenuator slash voltage divider because the other one has seen a little heat, man. A little burned up. And way overdriven. Um, this thing runs well. There's one thing left I want to change, and I wanted to document this before I went any further. Let's see if I turn the gain up here a little bit. You might be able to see that this whole front end of this board is not supported. It's it's free to move up and down as much as it wants. The cabinet is scratched all the way up to here. So if you look at the board, you'll see the cabinet scratched all the way up to here. I, I want to put, there's no, there's no side supports. The only thing that's holding this board in place is friction in Jesus's dreams. Um, and of course the two solder tabs that I added back here on the coax connectors. This thing's just floating. It means the cabinet had no real ground on it for the most part. And uh, the board's just in here flexing. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pieces of phenolic and I'm going to solder them here on the edges of the cabinet here and one over here on this side. I'm going to drill a hole through and add some hardware. Now, 
I do that from just the standpoint of functional safety. Okay. Um, I really don't know how much airtime this box is going to get. I don't want to deviate from the ass kicker formula too awful much. I don't mind building like this. I mean, I don't mind. I could build like this all day long. It's very easy, very simplistic. I mean, God. I mean, I wonder if they were afraid the coax was going to come off. <laughs> it's like a full inch worth of solder. So I could build like this all day. I just choose not to. I, I want to build differently. So, but this this is a safety. This is an electrical safety issue. We're talking an unfused multiple hundreds of amps worth of connection that this is going to get plugged into, and this floating around. Man, I'd sure hate to see it come up and kiss the top of the fan and cause a short or break the fan. Which I'm pretty sure I'm just going to replace this with a brand new sun on. We're going to put a brand new grill on it because this is all rusted and bent as frig. Looks horrible. Yeah, we're gonna probably get rid of this little guy here. It's a 6.6 .6 watt, 12 volt, ball bearing, Schmick look new made in Taiwan. And we're gonna replace that with a brand new half amp, 12 volt, does magical things when you turn it on and move air. Okay, okay. I throw this last piece in here, this last piece in here, we're going to rebuild the fan. I've already tested it, checked it. I'll come back around and I'll test it and check it with you guys. Um, our numbers are pretty close. We're short just a little bit because we're not driving the holy bejesus out of these precious 200 plus dollar a piece transistors anymore with uh, yet another transistor. I mean, if we wanted to stay on the old fake guys over here that cost $19 a piece, we could beat the ever-living brakes off of them and we blow them up, no one cares. In the same breath, I have enough of those transistors now that have come here that were put in as real. And we've come to find out they're fake as... Um, I want to do a couple things. I want to do a destruct test on them. I want to run them real hard. I want to see what their input's like, see what their output power's like. So, yeah. Uh, this is going to be a two-part series, by the way. I'm going to break this up. As soon as I get this amp finished, we're going to cut out, and I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to shoot the other half of this segment. Um, and we're going to throw this in the archives here. I got a bunch of videos. I, I mean, I have repaired way more videos than you. I have repaired way more amps than you guys have seen on video. And I know I've been cranking out these videos like crazy. I'm sitting here, I'm watching my view numbers go down, down, down. Because when I come out with four videos a day, no one's going to sit down and watch four hours worth of my YouTube videos. It's not very many of you, anyhow. I mean, come on, we all live in a realistic world. We understand we've got lives, wives, and kids and stuff. So, yeah, the same breath. Today has been an awesome day. Um, my new headset made by Aftershock came in today. This thing is awesome. It is speakerless. It, uses, it utilizes through bone ear technology. Um, it doesn't get in the way. I was out digging a hole earlier today and you know, my other headsets like this Plantronics that I like to use. Remember when I had all this weight of the battery pushing my ear out. And the other thing is that sweat and the sweat would run down the Plantronics headset and then run down into the mic. I ruined a couple that way. This is not that. And it sounds amazing. The sound quality on this thing is amazing. Other than that there's a speaker inside of here that pushes up against your it's uh, not directly over your ear, it's right in front of it. It's a little bit of a weird sensation to feel the speakers vibrating underneath the rubber and pushing against your skin, but it's not directly into your ear hole, which I love. Those of us that are older and had competition loud stereos and have done some crazy loud things in their lives and never really paid attention to ear safety or ear pro, um, our ears ring all the time. We have this thing called tinnitus, which is a joy to have, let me tell you. Some days it's incredibly bad to where I can barely hear anything, and then there's other days I can like hear a mouse having sex with another mouse in the field 400 yards outside the house. So, anywho, just this is a kick ass day because I finally got myself a headset that fits me comfortably, doesn't annoy me in any way, stays stuck to my head, and I can take my face diaper on and off and not get in the way. So, okay. 
Let's put two pieces of Fenelic in here and change the fan. I'll quit wasting your all's time. Let's go. Okay, new fan, new fan guard. It's all rusted and bent to holy poo. New transistors, new power wire, new relay, new wiring. New, 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 and new, and new. And our end result is, survey says, 12 volts, by the way. Hello, one, two. But no drive. Make more power. Hello, audio. So 400 watts on 12. Let's reach down here. Okay. And we'll let our super caps charge. long enough. Hello, audio. Hello, audio, one, two, one, two. Hello, audio. 650 with a real deal, real McCoys. Which I'll take any day of the week. Let's, uh, let's try running it with the lid on it. This lid is held in with sheet metal screws. It's because whoever had this last had knocked all the pin nuts out of it. And instead of putting crush nuts in there, they put sheet metal screws. So let's tighten down a couple of these. I don't want to get too carried away because as soon as I'm done with this portion of the video, I gotta take the lid off and clear the inside, which means I gotta tape off that relay since it's not in an enclosure. We gotta prevent that future corrosion, man. All right. Hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This makes me happy. Fully tested and ready to rock and roll. Rock and roll. Well, being that I'm not so narcissistic, I gotta have my label on the outside of the box, and this is basically a restore. I can put it on the inside. I feel comfortable with that. So, uh, put some more screws in this uh, elect electronic sin bin. I guess would be the best way to put it. It's a sin bin, but aren't they all? All right, some screws in this sucker. We're gonna call this a win. Well, gentlemen, as I do the screws, and not to hold anybody else's more time, I put the lid on this sin bin and we're gonna call it a day. I appreciate you all tuning in to watch. I mean, it does mean a lot and it's very helpful to me. Every single video you guys watch helps a little. And it all adds up in the long haul. Hopefully, y'all learned a little bit. I know I learned a couple little different tricks. I mean, I didn't think that board was going to come back a tenth of that quality. And there was a little bit more to getting it cleaned up this time around than just putting acetone on it and pushing a paintbrush around it. I had to reach way back in the trick book to get the board to come up that way. But it's sealed up, so there's be no more corrosion. I know that this is going to go to a non-smoking home, so that means eternal life ever after. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to run, guys. Big thanks to Mechman, Siglent, XS Power, Burkhardt Axle Dynamics. But honestly, it's it's this is all about you guys, and uh, I hope you guys can handle the fact that I'm putting out this many repairs. 
I know it's a lot of videos coming out back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I'm going to need this for the next portion of this other video. But they've all got to come out. we got to document everything we do. And uh, i got to have true transparency on everything. So this one's done, ready to go home. Let's disconnect this puppy. We're going to walk it over. Set it down. We're going to pick up this big beast. I'll see you guys. Click, click, click.